I give up. I'm so done with dating with guys. I don't know how I always end up in the exact same situation. It's always the same thing. They're not in a place where they are looking for a relationship. They have other things that are more important. And I'm just like, oh, I'm never good enough. You know, a decade ago, I would watch this woman cry and feel sympathy for her, but with time, I have come to the conclusion that this is a self-imposed harm. When guys say they are focused on other things or they are not ready for a relationship, they do it because they don't want to hurt you by saying, I just used you for your body. They don't want a relationship with you. If you are dating material, then men would want to date you. But you see, women who are dating material don't sleep around with all the chads. You say to yourself, I always end up in the same situation. Well, do you always date the same type of guys? Do you always jump into bed before securing the commitment? <laughs> Don't go anywhere because you're going to want to hear this. You guys, I fucked up. I fucked up real bad. And this could have potentially been a really great guy. So I took a break from the dating apps for a little while because it was getting a little toxic and I recently just started getting back on it again, particularly Hinge. And don't act like I'm the only one who does this, okay? But I was talking to a few different guys at the same time, you know, via text, FaceTime here and there. Um, and then I narrowed it down to two. Now, one of the two was kind of a new guy. He just sparked my attention a few days ago, but he had a lot of potential. So it's down to Justin and Mike, right? And Justin happened to be available sooner than Mike, so I scheduled a date with Justin. Justin and I went out last night, and what I thought would be a really wonderful evening, um, it turns out that I really fucked up, and here's why. So we sit down, we order a drink, and he looks at me, and he's like, I have to say, it's so fucking nice to meet you in person, Carrie. So sweet, right? And then I'm like, thank you, Justin. I really appreciate that. It's really nice to meet you too. <laughs> ah! Hold on. So now he's just kind of looking at me, like a little confused, like, like, are you serious? And I'm like, are you okay? He's like, you just called me Justin. And I was like, um, do you prefer to be called something else? And he's like, yeah, I like to be called by my name, Eric. So now I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? I just pick up my phone, look at our last conversation, and I notice that I never stored his number. And this whole time I thought his name was Justin, but Justin was one of the other guys that I decided not to meet up with. I did try to apologize and explain and kind of laugh it off. And he just, he just wasn't having it. And I get it. Okay, there has to be other people out there that have done this. I can't be the only one. I mean, we're all talking to so many people at the same time. And you know what? I don't recommend it anymore. From now on, I am focusing on one person at a time and I will store their name as soon as I start chatting with them. Um, but you know, most of the time I chat with these guys and the conversation doesn't go on for more than an hour and I never wind up storing their number. You know, you gotta be worthy of the name storing. <laughs> Dating in your 30s. Am I right? <laughs> women jump in and out of dating like it's nothing, man. It's crazy for me to think how there are women in their 40s who get divorced, go into a dating app, and still get more matches than dudes who are 20 and have a lot of things going on for them. These women talk to a lot of guys at the same time. Uh, they do the, their little games, their little competitions. They sift groups of guys to get the best option. Hell, they don't even save the name of the guys they meet and there was one comment in this video saying uh, that is why i never say their name on the first date women's dating problems are remembering all the names of the guys they have at the tip of their fingers and this is why i don't feel sympathy for women who cry that boys done them wrong because you have all the options 
and the responsibility to speak a good man lays on you. Honestly, I hope this man that was dating her had some self-respect and blocked her number. And you know guys, I'm just sitting here uh, drinking my coffee while making this video and I'm just so happy I don't have to deal with women like this in any way, shape or form. So be like me and don't get involved with absurd people. So we have this bimbo over here acting all entitled, uh, rejecting guys because their name starts with a J or because they are shorter than her, and she thinks it's funny. Well, let me tell you, it's men who have the last laugh, because all these men will peak in their 30s, meanwhile you will face bump into a big fat wall at that age, and will end your life with your cats and wine, or with a better simp who you manipulate to your advantage, but still feel miserable about your life. And hey, uh, not trying to be mean or anything, it's what statistically will happen. So carry on with your entitlement and see where it leads you. This is Misogyny Kills, Kill Misogyny Part 1. If you are a man, desexualize women. There are a lot of things that need to happen to liberate women. But you can take part in liberating women from male gaze. Desexualization of women should be the default of the way you look at women. Right now we have the world that sexualizes women and pushes the burden of desexualizing ourselves onto women. So we have to dress this way. We have to talk this way. We have to act this way. No, sir, men are not animals. Men are perfectly capable of controlling themselves. If they are not, they must learn because that's what it means to be human beings. So unless a woman gives you an enthusiastic invitation to sexualize her, don't sexualize her. Us being desexualized is central to us laying claim to our full humanity. Men, you should be earning the privilege to be able to sexualize us. We shouldn't be earning our rights to be desexualized. So let's talk about liberating women from the male gaze. You know guys, we live in a society where looks are considered grape, right? So we've come to a point where we need permission or to sign a contract to be able to look in all directions. Now what's funny to me is that Women will cry so much about men talking to them without permission or looking at them with interest or catcalling them. But I tell you, the moment you take those things away from them, they will lose their mind. Okay, this is the reason why a lot of women uh, put on makeup first thing in the morning. This is the reason why a lot of women go to clubs, why they take two hours to dress up before going out. It's because they like receiving male attention. So yeah. No one is saying um, it's nice when men undress women with their eyes, but don't come to me with this bullcrap of enthusiastic invitations. You're not going to tell me where I can look. And if you don't, wanna, if you don't want people staring at your hours, uh, don't wear shorts that reveal half your hours. Guys, I wish all problems uh, in the world had an easy solution like this. You know, feminism isn't about defending all women. I have no problem telling you that Tommy Lauren is painful. Feminists are not obligated to defend women who subscribe faithfully to the ideologies of patriarchy and white supremacy. Feminism is about reimagining power, how we understand power and how we exercise our power. In patriarchy and white supremacy, power is understood to be power over somebody else. So you accumulate your power through domination. That's why slavery was a socially and culturally acceptable form of institution. That's why our entire economy is built upon the backs of people of color and women who are considered less powerful. Because the only way you do well is at the expense of another person. Feminism is about hating that traditional concept of power and insisting that we start understanding power as power with somebody else. So I am building with you. It's a community. We are building together. That's why when you're not doing well, I'm not doing well. Because I accumulate my power with you. I'm invested in how you are doing and how well you do. Because that's where I get my power. You know, feminism. Yeah, feminism is about women. Unless a woman is against the cult, then she is banished. 
We've seen examples of that. Our entire economy is built upon people of color and women. What? <laughs> no, the entire economy is built mainly by men. This woman is so indoctrinated that she blames even the bad weather on the patriarchy. She even said that the patriarchy and white supremacy are to blame for slavery. Yeah, because Europeans were never slaves, you see. Asians have never been slaves. People of color have never been slaves to other people of color. Talk about white supremacy. Never chase after a bus or a man. There'll always be another one. Never chase after a... I can't take my eyes away from this uh, veil. Shouldn't it be their will and not they will always be another one? You know, guys, my accent sucks, but at least I know my grammar. But what did I expect from Barbie over here? Well, let me tell you, Barbie. Buses don't walk 24-7. If you wait too long, eventually you'll miss out on the last one. Same as with men. You wanna party through your 20s, you wanna be a boss babe. Cool. But Ken won't be waiting for you at the end of the journey. You'll just find yourself crying and asking yourself, why do I always end up in the same situation? <laughs>